Well, good morning, everybody. Happy Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah, I hope the, the menu's ready since who cares who's in it now, but the lines aren't, right? So I've still got an attitude about that. But um, actually, as the world kind of ramps up to, uh, to think about the, the celebration of a Super Bowl, today for us as we gather together as God's family is this special uh, moment in the life of Christ of his transfiguration, this, this change in his appearance that we would see his glory. And you will hear from the Father's heart to yours uh, that we would listen to him. So we're thankful for, for Pastor Mike as he brings God's word to us today on this celebration of the transfiguration. As uh, we bring God's grace to your life today, just a few things as we look ahead uh, this coming uh, Wednesday, February 14th, that should be a date that is in your mind, uh, is Ash Wednesday. We're going to gather for worship at 7 o'clock for Ash Wednesday. We will be having the imposition of ashes, and if you so wish. And so that'll be our time together at, as the beginning of the Lenten season. So from Ash Wednesday all the way through Easter, we'll, we'll be worshiping every Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Uh, with this theme, Christ for you and Christ in you, right? that all that God has for us and his passion and love, uh, the depth of his character is formed in us as uh, he gives himself for us. So Christ for us and Christ in us. Pray God's blessing in uh, this Lenten season. As we grow God's family, there's lots of opportunity to be in his word. As we show God's love, uh, his table's coming up. And so there's, check your grace notes, there's uh, uh, something on the announcement wall to indicate your ability to help and give towards that. Uh, soup suppers, uh, not Ash Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, we begin gathering for uh, supper, uh, 6 o'clock. Uh, if you could help uh, bring something for those suppers, be thinking about uh, showing, uh, serving one another that way. And then the great joy that our preschool is open for registration for the community. Uh, so thankful for the gift of that. All right. Uh, I think because of where Ash Wednesday was falling and gearing up for all of that, we missed kind of the more formal celebration of our milestone anniversary blessings. And so I just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge those that in this year of 2024 are having a milestone uh, anniversary. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. If that's your year, right? If your 24 is your year, uh, what, if you would, would you mind standing up so we can celebrate you? Anybody? None. There we go. Yes, here we go. Come on, stand up, stand up, stand up. Yes. How many? 20, 40, back there, 40, 45, you look, you look too young for that, look, 45, congratulations, all right, and, and then, oh, what for you guys, Dale, and it's what year, 40 for you, okay, let's sing happy anniversary to our milestone, and then, I look, I see there's a bunch of 50 plus out there, so, yeah, there we are, yep. Happy anniversary, you guys. Yeah, for sure. Let's sing happy anniversary to our couples. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, dear milestone anniversary. Happy anniversary to Yeah, that's so good. I do want to say a prayer of blessing upon, uh, upon those marriages. So, Lord, we just take a moment uh, at the beginning of our time together to thank you for the joy and blessing of marriage. Would you continue to be at the center of life together? Uh, would you bring about a continued steadfast love and care and compassion uh, for each other along life's way? 
We thank you for the example that these couples provide for us, and we pray that your continued blessing upon them always. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. All right, all the change we need, this change in Christ's appearance that brings to us this moment when we hear God's voice speak to us, that we would listen to him. Let's stand and begin our worship as we celebrate the transfiguration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, as we gather in your name, we pray that you would open our ears to hear and our eyes to see your glory and the depth and the wonder and the beauty of who you are as a transfigured, glorified Savior. So, Lord, bless our worship to that end, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing. Glory be to God the Father. is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven, heaven and earth. If you, O oh Lord, kept a record of sins, O oh Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. So together as God's people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace and imploring for the sake of Christ and saying... God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Give us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake. He forgives all of our sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, I declare with great joy, your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Forgiven and free. Let's sing our song of praise. Be lifted high. You be 
Kids, come on up. You may be seated. <clears throat> All right. Good morning. You can do better than that. Good morning. Good morning. There you go. How are you guys doing today? Good. Good. What do I have here? What do you think? You think it's water? Oh, Pastor Majeski thought it was vodka. <laughs> but it's here. And what is, what is this? Vodka. Well, this is going to help us understand our story today. So you see, it's just a plain glass. It's from Anna Marie Island. And when I bought it, it was filled with something cold. But today <laughs> we just have water. And what we're going to see today in our gospel lesson is Jesus is transformed. What is it? Do you know what that means? Transformed? To change, to look different, okay? How about transformers? Anybody have transformers, toys? No? No, they weren't. They're popular a couple years ago. Yeah. So, anyway, this is just plain water, okay? What happens when I do this? What happens? Does it look different? Yeah, it looks different. You see all the little bubbles on the straw? Yeah, and it's bright. You can almost use it for a, a flashlight, right? Okay, but it's the same glass, and it's the same straw, and it's the same water. Nothing changed other than what it looks like. Well, today Jesus took three of his best friends, three of his disciples, way up on a mountain to pray. Peter, James, and John, they were with Jesus, and while they were up there, all of a sudden... Jesus changed. He looked just like that. His face was bright like the sun, and his clothes were dazzling white, and they were afraid. And Peter wanted this to last forever, so he wanted to build some shelters. And Moses and Elijah were there with Jesus, and they were talking. But Peter said, let's build some shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And we'll stay up here forever. But Jesus had other things to do. This was just before he went into Jerusalem, where we'll be coming up on Ash Wednesday, where we begin our walk with Jesus to the cross. So remember, just because something looks different, it doesn't mean it can't be the same. Same water, same glass, but it looks different. Got that? All right, and we're going to learn a big churchy word today, transfiguration. Just like transformers, it's a change. All right? All right. Well, you can transform back to your seats. How's that? (laughs) 
Now the joy of hearing from God's Word. The Old Testament reading from Exodus 34. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the covenant law in his hands, he was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, his face was radiant, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them. So Aaron and all the leaders of the community came back to him, and he spoke to them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near him, and he gave them all the commands the Lord had given him on Mount Sinai. When Moses finished speaking to them, he put a veil over his face. But whenever he entered the Lord's presence to speak with him, he removed the veil until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, they saw that his face was radiant. Then Moses would put the veil back over his face until he went in to speak with the Lord. And from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ who is the image of God. For what we preach is not ourselves, But Jesus Christ is Lord in ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God God in honor of our transfigured, glorious Lord. Let's stand for the gospel today. This is the basis for pastor's message to us from Mark chapter 9. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. And there there he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses who were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. Because they were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them. And a voice came from the cloud. This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. And suddenly when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So how many of you have heard the phrase, slow to speak and quick to listen? That doesn't describe me. I am slow to listen and quick to speak, which is a problem. But listening is an acquired skill. It takes a lot of practice. And there is a big difference between simply hearing the words and actually listening to what a person has to say. And careful listening is merely, is more than merely sounds. Active listening requires our full attention. Hearing is accidental, it's involuntary, 
and it's effortless. It doesn't take anything to hear. On the other hand, listening is focused, it's involuntary, or voluntary, and it's intentional. And my wife accuses me all the time of intentionally hearing but not listening. Many years back before refrigeration, ice blocks would be cut from lakes and streams and rivers, and they would be put into an ice house and covered with sawdust. And the story goes that a man lost a very valuable watch while he was working in the ice house. He searched high and low, but to no avail. He couldn't find his watch, neither could any of his co-workers. But a small boy heard about the empty-handed searches, and he slipped into the ice house during the <coughs> noon hour while the men were at lunch. And he soon came out with the watch in hand. And amazed, the men said, how did you find it? We looked high and low, and we couldn't find that watch. The boy replied simply, I closed the door, I laid down in the sawdust, and kept very still. And soon, I heard the watch ticking. Now, oftentimes, our question isn't, whether God is speaking, but whether we are being still enough and quiet enough to hear. Yes, Jesus assures us that our Heavenly Father always listens to us, but do we really listen to God? Do we follow the instructions of Psalm 46 that says, Be still and know that I am God? Or are we so intent on giving our opinion that we sometimes offer advice before we really understand what was being said. And I say I'm guilty of this. Uh, my youngest daughter will oftentimes tell me something. And just about the time she's done speaking, I offer my pearls of wisdom. To which she responds, Dad, I don't remember asking for your opinion. <laughs> yes, dear. But we listen to these be still and listen to God's voice. Listen to what he has to say. My mother, many years ago, uh, gave me some sage advice. God gave you two ears and one mouth. Shut up and listen. But in the days leading to Jesus' transfiguration, it had been a roller coaster ride for Peter. One minute he was declaring, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And the next minute, Jesus was saying to him, Get behind me, Satan. You're a hindrance to me. For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Peter had risen to the heights of declaring the true identity of the man who called him to become a fisher of men. And then he had fallen to the depths, being told by the Son of the living God that he was being influenced by the evil one and was ob an obstacle to his mission. And he would fall even further, denying three times that he knew Jesus while in the courtyard of the high priest. He would rise again still higher, declaring with boldness that he could not and would not stop preaching about Jesus. And in Acts chapter 4 he says, For we cannot but speak of what we have seen and what we have heard. Now, if you're like me and being honest about your faith, it's sometimes like a roller coaster ride. It's a series of highs and lows. One minute you're on that mountaintop having this wonderful experience. You're on fire for Jesus. You want to share the good news with everyone you see, only to fall down into the valley where your faith seems pointless or lifeless. I think we can let Peter's example be encouragement to us. So in Mark's account in chapter 9, we find that Jesus has led Peter, along with James and John, up a high mountain to pray, where Jesus was transfigured before their very eyes. And Mark tells us, his clothes became radiant, intensely white as no one on earth could bleach them. And there on that mountain, 
Jesus talked with Moses and Elijah. Peter, James, and John saw Jesus. They saw Elijah. They saw Moses. And in Luke's account of the transfiguration, he says that Jesus was in conversation with Moses and Elijah about his coming departure, about his exodus that would soon be accomplished in Jerusalem, where he would be put to death only to rise again. Now, we're uncertain if Peter heard that conversation or not, but Scripture tells us that he and his two friends were terrified. He didn't know what to say. But Peter was intent on prolonging their stay on the mountain. Peter didn't understand what he was seeing or saying, but he offered to build three shelters. And the problem with that is he gives Jesus the same honor as he's showing Moses and Elijah. They're on the same plane, apparently, in Peter's eyes. In this brief glimpse of man, of majesty, Peter, uh, Peter was bewildered. And when he was in the midst of suggesting that he erect three shelters for the Lord and these two great Old, time, Old Testament prophets, they were enveloped by a cloud, a bright cloud. And reminiscent of hearing the Lord's, at the Lord's baptism, this loud voice came from heaven. And it came to tell him, enough, it's time that you listen. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. And this is the insistent call of God at all times for all people and in all places. God's word is as alive and active today through the scriptures as it was when Peter heard it on the Mount of Transfiguration. We are in God's word. We have the opportunity to see just a glimpse of majesty and experienced the same foretaste of glory as Peter, James, and John did as the Holy Spirit works in our hearts. And have you ever had that moment in your life of faith? A moment when suddenly, with great clarity, the wonder of God breaks through to you. It might have been at the birth of your firstborn child. You hold that little one and marvel at God's fragile gift of life. It could be when that verse in Scripture that you have read for years breaks through to you with new meaning because it captures the messiness in your life. And there was that aha moment for Martin Luther in the book of Romans in chapter 1 where all of a sudden he realized that you didn't have to work to be saved. That it was your faith that saves you. Transfiguration captures a promise for us. And it's God's promise to be there in all of our life, both the good and the not so good. He's with us through his son, Jesus Christ. And in just a moment, his presence is known, which can change everything, and we're struck by the wonder of God. David Schmidt would say, sunrises do not last forever. One moment the sky is brilliant with color and the next it's faded into a muted blue. And as Peter, James, and John stare on in wonder, a cloud comes and overshadows everything. And sometimes life can be that way. One moment you experience life with amazing clarity only to give unway to certain uncertainty and a brilliant vision disappears into obscurity. And that, and that is when all of life around you is closing in. You feel that you're alone with nowhere to go and no one to turn to. When that happens, a voice breaks through, breaks through all of the confusion and uncertainty with crystal clarity. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. And when life returns to normal and the vision fades away and suddenly the familiar closeness of God seems to be far away and distant, it's then that we remember we're not left alone. God continues to speak to us with clarity. Jesus is the beloved Son of God. 
listen to him. And God's word shapes how we respond to the transfiguration. When Peter saw the wonder of the transfiguration, he desperately wanted to prolong it. He wanted to erect three shelters so that on that mountaintop they could stay forever. But the transfiguration is not something that can be prolonged. It's here for a moment, and it quickly passes. We can try to figure or try to capture the transfiguration to prolong it, but that will only end up in frustration. And as much as we would like to, God cannot be boxed into our timing, our life plans. That will bring us the type of help we need at exactly the time we think we need it. What kind of God would that be? Or would we have if he were that predictable? Our God is much greater than that. And he's more mysterious than that. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. They are beyond our understanding. And prolonging the experience or capturing it in a bottle only to make it available at just the right time or right moment in life, it's not an option. It's here when we're at our lowest that the Father's voice reminds us that Jesus is God, now and always, not just in the moments of transfiguration. He's God in the midst of all the confusion and messiness in our lives. His voice remains with us wherever we go and we live our lives to the fullest when we listen to him. The voice of God has the power to transfigure the world. In just a few days, on Ash Wednesday, we begin our journey to the cross. And we end up on Mount Calvary, where we see Jesus hanging on a cross. And although the sun should be shining, we see creation itself losing light. Darkness closes in on us in the middle of the day. And Christ's once gleaming clothes are now part of a dice game. Jesus will be naked his body bruised and bloodied, a piece of sport to the mockers who pass by. But he is not alone in his death. He's joined by two common criminals, and their presence turns our attention to God's word. Prophecy is fulfilled. Jesus is numbered with the transgressors. Where is the darkness now instead of light? Instead of bloodied flesh, instead of gleaming garments, of criminals instead of prophets, and we listen for God's voice. Jesus is the suffering servant who takes our sins away. His death brings life. His broken body brings healing. His word brings direction to those who have lost their way. And even though we haven't seen the transfigured glory of Jesus, with our own eyes. At various times in our lives, we have received comfort and consolation. And we can recall those times that we have felt the presence and peace of Jesus. On that mount of transfiguration, God has given us just a glimpse of the glory to hold on to in our hearts, to recall it when we need it most. And at those times, and they will come, we listen We listen to and obey the voice of the Father. This is my Son. Listen to him. Jesus, who is now in glory, is the same Jesus that walked the earth. The same Jesus whose teachings are recorded in Scripture. The same Jesus who suffered injustice. And the same Jesus who rose victoriously. Our lives are filled with many experiences. And Jesus is with us through all of them. And the only way for us to unite in every experience we have in life is to follow the command of the Father. Listen to him. Listen to the voice of the Savior. Follow him up the mountain of consolation. Remain with him through every suffering and cross. And listen to everything he teaches knowing that one day all believers will be united with him in glory forever. Listen to him. In Jesus' name, amen.
And now let's stand and sing our song of response. Let's remain standing and confess our faith together. I believe in God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven, of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only, only Son, our Lord, Lord who was, was conceived, conceived by the by Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, born of the Virgin, Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was, was crucified, crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we bring our blessings before our God in a time of offering. Thanks, Roger. Let's pray. Lord, we bring to you just a portion of that which you've blessed us with. Would you use these, our offerings at grace, that we might be a blessing to the people around us, in our family, in our community, and for our world, that others might see only you in our actions and hear the voice of your love and grace and mercy. To that end, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, as we uh, gather our hearts before the throne of grace, trusting indeed that the Lord hears us, that the Lord listens, um, here's the prayers that we'll be lifting up today. We're going to be praying for little Rowan Winchester. Uh, Rowan has uh, been suffering from uh, a virus that has been causing him some pain. He's been in and out of the hospital. We're thankful that little Rowan, he's about what, um, I don't know, I want to say like 13 months old, 14 months old, so it's been hard. He doesn't quite get all that's going on, but um, yeah, and so for Rowan, also for mom and dad, Genevieve and uh, Brock, and and then little Clara, too, along the way. Uh, We'll be praying, too, for um, uh, Dan Hogan. Uh, He is having surgery this morning. He's got uh, uh, a a really bad infection that needs to be tended to, and so the surgery is taking place to help uh, drain all of that. Kirk Moss is having uh, open heart surgery. We'll be praying for Kirk today. Also, um, we'll be praying for Carol uh, Papinian. She, a uh, Rapinian, Rapinian Carol. She has been placed in hospice care. She's the sister of Susan Euchre. And then we're praying for Mike, uh, Pastor Mike's and Chris's son, Scott. He's uh, having a surgical procedure as well this week. And um, Deonta, did I say that right? Deonta, Deonta Gray, the nephew of Paul Okunyevsky. He's got a pinched nerve, and so we're praying for God's healing upon Deonta. All right, the list is long and the needs are great, but uh, the Ancient of Days, oh man, does he have the capacity to hear and to tend to our needs. So let's stand as we go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Gracious Father, with the appearance of Moses and Elijah at our Lord's glorious transfiguration, you reveal that all of the law and the prophets are fulfilled in Christ. Would you send your blessing that you would fill us? That the hope that we have in you may overflow in our lives with witness to others that don't know you, that are far from you. We pray that you, by your glory, And by your grace, we draw them closer to you. And Heavenly Father, we pray for your continued blessing upon all of our families, that parents would teach the faith to their children, that the forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed and lived out in all of our households. Would you remember all the expectant mothers, that they and their babies would be kept safe, Would you remember all those who are single? We thank you for their lives and the significance that they play in their lives of family and community. We pray that you would continue to bless and be abide with them. And Lord, you establish all authority on earth. Would you bless those entrusted with the responsibility to lead both here and abroad, that they would serve with integrity and honor for the well-being of all. 
and you are the God of all grace. So look with compassion on those who are in need. For little Rowan, for Dan and Kirk, and Carol and Scott. Grant them relief and comfort through the in Dianta. Grant them relief and comfort through the promise of sharing in eternal glory with Christ. And gracious Lord, you revealed your glory in the transfiguration of Jesus. Open our eyes that by faith we would see him. Would you continue to abide with us? Grant that we would heed your word to listen as you give us your word of forgiveness and grace and mercy. And Lord, we take a moment now to bring before you the cares and concerns that are on our hearts in a moment of silent prayer, we pray. So Lord, all of these things we bring before you. We trust in your great love and mercy. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right, so the prayer of our hearts is lead us to the cross because transfiguration is kind of this hinge. We're on our way to Lent beginning on Ash Wednesday. And one of the things that we do is that we let go of for just a moment in our lives the alleluias. And so this will be the last time until Easter. I might sneak one in. Sometimes I forget, and there pops one up in the middle of it. But tr- count it as a gift. But for a moment, yeah. no more hallelujahs until Easter Sunday. So with that, let's sing these hallelujahs with the, with the heart that sees Jesus and hears his word of love and forgiveness. So let's stand for our closing song, since Pastor Mike's been standing for three minutes now. <laughs> all right. From all that dwell below the skies.
so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a great week, everybody.